Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the National Shrine of St. Therese. Today's intentions for this Mass are for the intentions of the members of the Little Flower Society, the Infant of Prague, Memorial for Max and Helen Diaz and Anne Matern, Thanksgiving for Christopher, and a special intention for the Carmen Katz family and for Anne Selig, as well as our own intentions. And so we begin our celebration by blessing ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Coming into the Lord's presence, we ask for forgiveness and healing, especially for the times when we were so caught up with our own needs that we forgot God's presence in our lives as well as the needs of others. And so we ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you scattered the proud in their conceit. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you live up to the lowly. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have mercy on those who honor you. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory, grant that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of our glory. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky 
and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. The queen queen stands stands at at your right hand, hand, arrayed in gold. gold. The queen takes her place at your right hand in gold of Ophir. The The queen queen stands stands at your your right hand, hand, arrayed in gold. gold. Hear, O daughter, and see. Turn your ear. Forget your people and your father's house. The The queen queen stands stands at your your right hand, hand, arrayed arrayed in gold. gold. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your lord. The queen queen stands stands at your your right hand, hand, arrayed arrayed in gold. gold. They are born in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The queen queen stands stands at your your right hand, hand, arrayed in gold. gold. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom of God to his Father, to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he subjected everything under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Mary is taken up to heaven, a chorus of angels exalts. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, 
the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, some years ago, when I became involved here at the shrine and dug a little deeper into what St. Therese has to offer to us, there came a passage and a part of her life that scared me. And what was she talking about? She was talking about telling her sisters how little the homilies that the priests are teaching on Mary speak absolutely nothing to her. I said, oh my God, how do I prepare for a homily on Our Lady? During the 12th, 13th, and 14th century, there was so much discussion about Mary that what, was, what got lost in the process in the church was Jesus. And, you know, and Teresa is right on when she said, he says, when we don't know something about, somebody, something about someone, we invent it. We put them on a pedestal. And, and when you look at that, how many of us have used Mary simply as a crutch or just said, oh, I could never be Mary? And so we only look at the wonderful things that are attributed to her, but we miss often the very ordinary, simple situation in which Mary came to be and what God asked her to do. Now, whether we like that or not, Teresa is speaking her mind. And during the last six months of her life, she began to write a poem, a, a, a poem. And she said, and it was entitled, Why I Love You, Mary. Why I Love You, Mary. If you were asked to answer that question, what would you say? What would you put down? Mary lived a very ordinary life, just like you and I. She didn't have a blueprint when God asked her to become the mother of his son. And what a struggle. She was rejected by her people because she wasn't married at the time. If somebody said to you, oh, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and is going to take care of all of this, how would we have reacted? Put yourself into those shoes. And it seems like everything that happened, Mary just plodded along. She trusted God. And in today's gospel, we hear her going to her cousin Elizabeth, who in her elderly stage of life also conceived, which didn't make a lot of sense. But she saw the human need for her to be there and to help. But those opportunities are in your life, in my life every day there's always going to be somebody who is in need to be reached out. And how did Mary do that? She always did it 
She didn't complain. She didn't say, oh, I have to go six days on a walking trip, and then maybe six while she was already pregnant. She went. She put her own personal situations aside and said, this is what I need to do. That is what it means to be, lo to be loved and to share love and to care for one another. The next step comes her own birth, the birth of her son. They got no place to go. There's no inn. There's no room in the inn. Most of us have been gone to a hospital or we have had people around there to take care of us. She had Joseph. What did Joseph know about birth? But she trusted God. The next step when she goes to the temple to present Jesus as we will present it in the church to be baptism. Simeon glorifies God and then he says, you know what? A sword is going to pierce your heart. He's giving her an insight of what lies ahead. How do you feel or how do I feel when somebody says, just wait, what's, what's coming? Most of us feel that way when somebody maybe told us we have cancer or some other calamity, some other sickness that we know nothing about and there it is. A sword will pierce your heart. Well, we know the ending. We know when that fully happens, but that happened much earlier. Because the next step, Herod is trying to find Jesus to kill him. They have to run. They become the refugees. Do we ever think about that? Oh, we make many, com many comments about immigrants and, and refugees in our own time, not just in our country, but around the world. But Mary and Joseph were in there. They were running for their life. There was nothing beautiful. There were no angels singing there, telling them, oh, it's going to be okay. They had to live each day just the way it is and just as you and I need to do. And then when they finally come back to Nazareth and begin their life, we don't hear anything. Everything is ordinary. But Mary was faithful. There's a statue over, over in the museum of Mary, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And it says, Mary is more mother than queen. Mary is more mother than queen. It didn't hit me at first ever because you're being a male, you, you never think about some of those things until you realize the importance of mothers. And that's how Mary reaches out to each of us. We wouldn't be here if our mothers hadn't given us the love and the caring and all of those things, and they never give up. But Mary didn't either. And she continues to look out for us, for each of us. When Jesus on the cross said to his disciple, John, son, behold your mother, and then to Mary, Mary, behold your son. He is speaking, he's giving his mother over to us to call upon her. Can we even imagine, I know some of us do, when we have lost a son or daughter and the pain and the suffering that we go through, some of us never get beyond it or still struggling with it. Well, Mary did. Here is her son with all the promises that had been made. The point that I want to make is her life was so ordinary in terms of the everyday situations that you and I face each day that we can't put her on a pedestal and say, oh, well, we really have nothing in common. We have everything in common because she is one of us. And so as we celebrate this wonderful feast today, notice in the first reading from the book of Revelation, when we heard that God sent her into the desert, he took care of her. And you know what? What's the message there for us? Just as God has brought us into this life and we need to share our life and our giftedness with one another, he also promises us a place where we will be for all eternity. There is a connection there. And Mary is saying, trust me. Put your trust in the Lord because he will never give up. And Jesus in the gospel constantly tells us, Come to me, all you who are burdened and find life difficult, and I will refresh you. We are never alone. That's what Mary understood. And she shares that wonderful gift with all of us. 
So as we can again bring the ordinary gifts of bread and wine to the altar today, they're not just bread and wine, they become the body and blood of Christ, God's presence who comes, but he already lives in us. But we need a constant reminder that he is there. Not just what I want or what you want or anybody else. He makes it very real. You are mine, beloved. And how did Mary respond to that goodness? Oh, we have the beautiful example of the Magnificat today. And if you read it, it's scary. Because God's way is not our way of doing things. But she said, blessed be the Lord. And you and I can put our trust and confidence in her and say, Mary, help me to see what you saw. Help me to live the way you lived. Help me to love and be there for others as I was to the people in my life. And I think when we do that, we begin to understand just a little what it means to be the beloved of God. Because that is what Mary is, and that is who we are. If you have the songbook, the creed is on page 10. So let us offer our renewal of our commitment to the Lord and to one another. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Mary trusted in God's mercy. In that same confidence, we offer today our petitions. That every generation in the church call Mary blessed and look to her as a model of humble, faithful obedience. Let us pray to the Lord. That nations unite to combat pornography and all forms of violence against women and families. Let us pray to the Lord. That those awaiting the birth of a child have loved ones like Elizabeth to support them. Let us pray to the Lord. That missing children be reunited with their families and loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. That the model of friendship we all seek be found in the love shared by Mary and Elizabeth. Let us pray to the Lord. And for a moment now, let each one of us make her or his private intention. And for all of these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of Mary, who shows us by example how we need to live, each other, live our lives and share our lives with each other. And we ask for your grace to do so and to answer all of our needs through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. 
And now let us pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your churches coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously poured forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread in giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And let us take a moment to remember them by name. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our faithful spouse, Saint Therese, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespass against us, 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Thank you. And now let us reach out and share the peace of Christ with each other and your families at home. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof. The only say the word, the soul shall be healed. All generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so, before we finish our Mass, let us now go to page 707. Most of you know the song, Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of the womb. Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright. Gentle mother, Peaceful dog, teach us wisdom, teach us love. You were chosen by the Father. You were chosen for the Son. You were chosen from all women and for woman shining warm gentle woman quiet light morning star so strong and bright gentle water Peaceful dog, teach us wisdom, teach us love. And so our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Happy birthday and happy blessings for our Marys that we follow her and someday be joined together with all of creation. For this we pray. Have a wonderful day.